A long time ago in a galaxy almost far, far away, four makers unite in order to share and discuss their maker knowledge and some interesting topics along the way. Join us as we light the spark that brings back your childhood in the almost Star Wars <laughs> show. Welcome, everybody, back to the Almost Star Wars show. It's been a while. Um, we've had a bit of a break, and we did promise we weren't going to do that, so we failed already. But we are back. And um, I'm James from the Rebel Base Build, and I'm here with my friends. Dennis from the Black Market Outpost. And Ron, otherwise known as CG Artist. And you might notice that a certain smuggler is missing. Um, but I think, Dennis, you've, you've got some intel on his whereabouts. Yeah, so I've got a little bit of intel on his whereabouts. Last I heard, he's on a smuggler's mission trying to bring back more fat Banta from Tatooine. Mm-hmm. Okay. That is on a mission to get in the way of. Yes. So we'll, we'll carry on as three. We'll carry yep. on as three. So we, we have a couple of topics. We've talked about this today. And um, obviously, we want to get straight into those. So the first one, and quite apt as well, <laughs> considering we've had a bit of a break, we're going to talk about finding time to work on our projects and, and, yes. and how that works. Um, so, uh, Ron, why, why don't you kick us off on that one? Sure. Um, so, what? I, and this started well before the pandemic, a year before. During the pandemic, it was easier because, you know, we were all stuck at home. So after work, we just go straight to the garage and nothing's really changed. After work, uh, when I commute, uh, drive home, eh, kiss the wife. All right, I'm off <laughs> straight to the garage. She's usually watching something or exercising or something so it's not as big of a deal because we don't have any kids to worry about or pets to walk so it makes it a little bit simpler for me um also on the weekends we're all we're both doing our own thing um I and mean, she's taking some time off to go out of, out of town which is perfect because i can just sit in the garage all day <laughs> otherwise uh lunchtime is usually when i'm sitting there eating and drawing up you know sketching or something down in the cafeteria um, and of course, when you do commute, so I go into the office two times a week. So it seems like I get some of my best ideas while I'm driving or listening to an audio book. You, you just get into this zone and then all of a sudden you're at home. You're like, OK, I don't see any flashing blue lights and I didn't. There's no damage to the vehicle. However, I got here. So that's weird. So it's like you're in the zone. And then, of course, run out of the car, go in the garage and start to try to implement whatever you're thinking about. So that's, that's how I find time is usually after work and on the weekends. I've got a question, Ron, got a question. Um, does your wife watch this podcast? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Sometimes. You, know, you, you have just <laughs> described the perfect weekend is when she, she goes out. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a perfect weekend. Let me, let me tell you. But I mean, she works every other weekend as well. So while she's working, I don't have to entertain or do anything except go in the garage. And then I'm entertained. Yeah. But yeah, so so she works every other weekend, which just gives me free reign around the house to break things and right. you know, apologize later. <laughs> Dennis. Oh, it's a little tougher, man. Two little kids, full-time job. Time is very tiny, very small window. I usually get about an hour, hour and a half every day between getting home from work and the kids getting home from school. So I try to knock out as much as I can in that hour. And obviously, like Ron said, all day long, you're thinking about what you need to do, how you're going to do it. You know, I carry the book around. Everything gets noted in the book because I'll never remember by the time I get the home. Book. The book. And then, you know, weekends are hit or miss. If there's nothing going on, I can spend all day in the shop. If there is, I might sneak in an hour or two. I might not get any in there. It just varies on what's going on. But it's, I mean, I mean, you guys know when you have a full-time job and full household, mm -hmm. take this one to karate, take that one to swimming, do whatever. You're all over the place. Oh, yeah. My taxiing skills are exceptional, though. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, no, I, I totally feel your, your pain, if we're going to call it pain. Uh, I'm in a similar position as you, Dennis, uh, two young kids, got a three-year-old and an eight-year-old, full-time job as a teacher, got a missus. Um, you know, and as a teacher, you get all that time off, you know, the summers and the half-terms and things. But honestly, I was expecting to get so much more done 
and I've just I've just come into the end of a six week break. Right. Uh, I use the term break loosely. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't get the time. that that is not time for me in 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 the studio working away. Uh, that that's time with the family and kids. It should be, right? It should be. Right. So I get my stuff done late at night. So that's the good thing about the breaks because when you're not working in the day, uh, and there's been some research recently, hasn't there, that that um, mental work creates more byproducts in the brain and therefore you feel more exhausted after a day of like office work uh, not to take away from people that do manual jobs but apparently that's a thing um and i would say that's the case because i know when i'm at work i've done a, a nine five and i come home i am i'm dead you know and i find yeah. it hard i find it hard to stay up and work on my projects during the week it used to be all right a few years ago but I'm, maybe it's because i'm getting old but i find that harder and harder now but during the summer I was able to sort of claw some of that back because obviously you're not commuting to work, you're not doing the day job. Yeah, admittedly, you're still busy with the kids going out doing the zoos or the days out or whatever. But in the evening, it's almost like my body clock shifts and I can stay up again until two, three in the morning getting stuff done. And, you know, I managed to get a, a few projects uh, moved forward during the summer. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a challenge. It really is. And what makes me laugh is when I watch um, any of my videos back or like my, my little boy likes to watch the videos and sometimes we watch them back I can remember you know that shot there was literally five minutes whilst uh, you know we were running a bath for the kids I thought I'm just going to pop into the studio I'm just going to film a quick pan of a camera moving around something yeah. it's honestly still time I can yeah. run in here do something real quick uh, and then I might not do anything again for another day or two days and then I'll, yeah. I'll grab another I three know. minutes of footage and it's funny because you can it's the beauty of editing and piece it all together afterwards and you wouldn't know that but yeah my videos they are filmed over a, a large period of time. They're not yeah, filmed in, in a weekend or a day. They're, they're like, I mean, mine are exactly the same way. I mean, I find myself setting an alarm clock to wake up on a Saturday, you know, an hour <laughs> or two before everybody to maybe get out in the shop and build the last piece or film the last segment or whatever the case may be. But it's how we got to roll, I guess. Not, not too many options. Yeah. Do you, do you think, um, do you think it has a, it makes a difference to, to the to the product? I mean, Ron, I know you were saying obviously you know you're struggling to find time as well with, with jobs and stuff. I think the only difference really is you don't have the young ones running around. But right. So do you, do you think that makes a difference? I mean, how do you do it? Are you able to film lots of content in in a block, or or are you the same? Are you stealing five minutes here, five minutes there? Uh, yeah, actually, I do the same thing. Um, so when I do have the work from home days, you know, I take a dedicated lunch from 11 to 12. That's one hour that I can run out to the garage. I set a timer I can run out to the garage, record something or build something real quick, mm -hmm. keep an eye on the time and then run back. So I don't even eat for lunch when I'm at home. I just go and film something or build something. So there's that. So yeah, there's the time that's uh, being stolen there. Um, other things too is I I know I should sleep in a little bit more on the weekends because I get up about 5.30 in the morning each each morning to go to work. Um, even when I'm, you know, working at home, I still get up at that same time because the wife also gets up. And once I'm up, I can't get back to sleep. So then I can run down to the garage early in the morning, but I can't really make a whole lot of noise because the neighbors will get mad. So I'll sit there and I'll try to clean up or record like just a talking head or something like that, only to edit and get it on the on the on the uh the chopping block on the floor but you know at least get my ideas in order so there's that mm. so you both you both said the same thing i think we all said the same thing about you can spend the day thinking about the next shot or thinking about what you're going to build and yeah. how you're going to do it um dennis tell us a bit more about that so uh, i i spend a lot of time planning these things out and because the memory is not so great and there's so many other things going on i tend to try to write down i've actually started keeping a log book of ideas, like maybe things I want to say while I'm doing the video or a certain shot I'm looking for, for whatever I'm building. Do you actually think about the script? You think about the words as well. Uh, occasionally I think about the words, not necessarily a script, but I might have like a phrase or something that comes to mind that I want to use. So I'll jot that phrase down because I'll never remember the phrase three or four days from now when I go to film this particular mm -hmm. segment. So I'll jot it down and then I'll try to work it into not necessarily a script, but maybe more or less of like a bullet point guideline type setup when I do it. Hmm. But as I mean, as far as same thing with recording, I might record a two minute clip and then not do anything for three or four days. 
Mm. And I've in the beginning, I think I caught myself running the camera a lot more, just like letting it run as I build. But there's a lot to go through that makes it even worse. So mm. now I think I've more or less adapted a style of where I kind of know what I want to film. Oh, so yeah. when I know I'm coming up to that shot, I might get, you know, a three or four or five minute video of just that particular part of the build. And then when I go to edit, which I'm obviously terrible at because I'm learning all this, it's a, it's much easier for me to go in there and get the section or the piece that I want rather than having to look at a 20 or 30 minute clip and find that little, you know, three or four or five second clip that you're going to use. Mm. You beat yourself up about edits, uh, Dennis. Your, your work is is awesome. And yeah, there's a journey that you've been on. And for sure, you can see that like all of us. But your edits are tight, man. It's good stuff. Mm. I love it. Um, getting Ron, there. Ron you, you were saying the same thing, weren't you, about um, thinking about the build a lot during the day. I, I mean, obviously, Dennis jots it down. I'll, I'll tell you what yep. I do in a minute. But, but how, what do you do? How do you approach that part? I do the same thing. Um, several notebooks all around. If, you, if someone actually started to go through my desk, they'd be like, what the hell is this? So there's little <laughs> scripts. Like sometimes I'll be in a meeting and, you know, when you're in a meeting, you're paying attention. Sometimes you doodle or start coloring in something. Everybody does that. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there writing a script down and, and <laughs> trying to memorize or think of things to say, something clever, something funny. I was still trying to pay attention to the meeting. So then at the end of the day, I have all these sheets of paper, loose sheets of paper that I've ripped out of the book. And then I take those home and then I'm like, what was I, what? What does that even mean? You know, and then I'll try practicing it. I even bought a uh, teleprompter, which I've yet to use. So it's funny, yeah. you go through reading it and reading it. And then you're like, that's, that's not how I talk at all. Everything, you know, it's too much enunciation. I have to slur everything. Needs some yeah. alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Got to, got to sort of try and keep keep the balance, haven't you, between scripted and keeping it real. Um, yeah, I mean, my, I, I'm similar to both of you guys. I, I do jot stuff down, but to be, to be honest, I'm not much of a notebook, pen, pencil user, if I'm honest. <laughs> I, I, teach, I teach a computing lesson, digital media, computing and things. So uh, you're not find many notebooks in my classrooms. But I tend to use sound recordings quite a bit. As you guys know, the whole Jamesy radio on my commute. I send you guys lots of my thoughts. Yeah. I'll, I'll sound record and send you my thoughts. But I do that quite a bit with like upcoming shows because even, even though my output has drastically reduced uh, this last year because you know the UK education system has been really, really full on. So it's, it's really taken up a lot of my time, um, you know, due to the, the backlash from COVID, et cetera. But that, that is now dissipating. So I should be able to get back to it a bit more. But um, for me, it's just quicker and easier to just literally hit record uh like on my hands free whilst i'm driving down the motorway and i will sometimes and this is stupid but sometimes you know go go through like a test run of my introduction and what i'm going to say about the build and and, and i have maybe the next four or five episodes uh on my phone <laughs> in dodgy sound clips which i can go back to and remind myself um I, I conjured up this whole idea of having an argument with myself on one of the videos about building something using a 3d printer and then scratch building it it was going to be i think brian did it in one of his videos before where like the cap wearing version of brian and then the the the, the normal version of brian um i, I like that and i, I think you know, I, I come up with a whole sketch of, of how i was going to do it um which is still in the bag um so yeah in terms of planning it, it's that but is it not the same as what we did as kids when you run to school you do your school day you've got your new millennium falcon toy at home you just want to get home you think about it in a day same stuff right yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's there's no difference, right? You're, it, it, and that goes along for anything. Anything that, that excites you, you're spending all day thinking about it, planning it, you know, game planning, getting your, your ideas together, what you're going to do just to get home and do it. I mean, yeah, that, that, anything that would excite you would bring those terms along with it. You're right. I mean, like, you know, you buy a new projector, anyone we know. And that's all you can think about. I can't wait to get home and watch this or watch that. Or you buy a new car. You're like, man, I can't wait till I get off of work. So I can just yeah. drive this thing, you know, same thing. Right. Same thing. Exactly. It's, the ex it's the excitement of the shiny new, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought the projector comment was because I've been boring you guys with my excitement about <laughs> oh, no, not at all. having a new projector set up ready for Andor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed watching you watching a movie. I enjoyed it. Well, there you go. You see, I like, I, like, I like sharing these things with you guys. You know? We're seeing the excitement <laughs> through your eyes. Yeah, and my, my hairy kneecaps. Yeah. I know all those things. Um, 
anyway, I bet the audience is thinking, what the <laughs> hell's going on here? Um, yeah, so that, that's interesting. Uh, the, we all plan, we all plan in a different way, uh, but ultimately we're still thinking about the next thing we're gonna we're gonna shoot. And it's interesting to hear you guys do the same. You know, you're you're still five minutes to record something, and then who knows in the edit it all just kind of pulls together. Yeah, I mean it does. And the other thing that I think a lot of people maybe don't realize or don't think about is when you're building a project for a YouTube channel, it's a totally different kind of building. Right. Even even if you have an hour in an hour without a camera, I probably get 60% more done than I would mm. with the camera, right? Because now you're stopping yeah. to adjust this, to move this, to line up a shot, and there goes your hour, and hence five minutes worth of video and time out. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a different animal. It's just a different game. And yeah, you're right. It's all stuff that we've... I guess sort of like developed through the time, right? And I didn't know what I was doing when I first started. Like mm -hmm. I said, that camera hit the on button, record, and it just ran while I was doing stuff. Then later on, I figured out how to chop all that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I know that we're, we're going to be covering the whole YouTube experience in an upcoming uh, episode when Brian joins us. We've, we've got a really yes. good topic planned. And no, no doubt we're going to explore a lot more of that. There's so much to say on that subject about how doing this for YouTube makes it so different and mm -hmm. presents a whole different set of challenges, you know, so that, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. But yeah. You've touched on some stuff there, Dennis, and it rings with me. Yeah. I'll tell you what I, I did. Uh, it was only yesterday, actually, because I've been working on um, a miniature build. I'm obviously doing quite a few of those at the moment. And it's one of the bounty hunter droids from the fallen order. And I just, I just sat in here and I, and I, airbrushed it and I did a load of stuff to it and I didn't film any of it. In fact, I filmed a little bit on my phone because I thought, well, oh, I better film some of this. And I realized I just got carried away and I did loads of it and I didn't film it at all. So yeah, that, that, that won't happens. be, anything. you know, I just, just, just enjoyed the build. Yeah. Right. But, you know, there we go. I might, I might go back and just, I'm not going to fake it. I did, there's one arm I did. I did one arm and a torso. So I'm just right. going to film the hell out of the second arm. The other arm, yeah. <laughs> yeah do it that way so. that happens a lot i catch my sometimes i catch myself doing that not even realizing i'm doing it right because you just get into the flow mm -hmm. yeah. and you're building and you're building you're building and you're like oh my god i never turned the camera on or i filmed the last thing and i'm three steps ahead of that now mm. whereas i get the feeling that ron just records everything i do uh <laughs> so what i do and this is gonna we'll touch upon this again and then when we have brian on the show but basically I cut or I record, make my cut, stop. Then I go to the next thing, re, re, uh, reposition the camera so it's not the same static, you know, scene. Hit, uh, make sure my focus is good because I do manual focus just in case because I don't like the focus hunting part. Hit record, make my other cut. Or if I'm if it's a longer cut, I'll I'll go through half of the cut, then I'll stop, just abruptly stop pause move the camera closer so you can see what i'm cutting adjust the focus press record and then finish the cut you know so yeah that's why something that would normally have taken a moment takes forever yeah you know? it's, definitely, it's definitely full on and, and we're, we're all looking forward i know to, to getting into that topic yeah. in, in, in the yeah. next episode um uh, yeah, so I was just, you reminded me of something when we were talking about the timings, we were sort of talking about the time and trying to find that time to build. I think one of the reasons why my content has changed in nature, uh, I guess quite drastically, actually, the last sort of three or four videos, mm -hmm. it's not that I've left room building behind. Um, it's still, it's still there. It's still something I'm doing. Um, but because my, my day job sort of change it got really quite busy when covid was a big deal um not a lot of learning and teaching could really take place in the way it normally would do right, so right. once the pandemic kind of subsided uh things in education started to return back to normal which actually meant there was an awful lot of catch-up to do so it, it it bled over into the evenings and the weekends and quite rightly so you know these kids uh, qualifications are important so i made sure I, I gave that my all but it did mean that the show didn't happen as often as it used to um, anyway, this isn't about the education system, but I'm getting to a point here. So I kind of took the, the decision to uh, concentrate on 3D modeling a bit more than big props, because 3D modeling is something I can do when I'm sitting in the living room. So I've got, I've got a, a decent powered laptop, you know, I can actually sort of 
sit alongside the wife. She can be watching her soaps and I can be 3D modeling something that I know I can then print out. So I, it's still working on the project. But it's just working in a virtual sense. And of course, you know, mm -hmm. technology allows you to work on virtual sense wherever there's an internet connection in a software, you can be doing something productive. Right. So I found myself, it was more just about, I still want to be able to create, but I know that I can't, because I've spent so much time working on the day job, I can't just all of a sudden disappear into my workshop because it's unfair on my family. Right. So therefore I think, right, okay, I'm going to grab my laptop. And that's easy to sort of put down, pick up, put down, you know, spend time with the kids, talk to the wife, but ultimately still be able to do stuff. And I think that's had an effect sort of gradually over time where more and more miniature builds have, have crept into my show just because I can do them easier. I think, I think that's, that's, yeah, that's the bottom line. So time does affect your hobby, you know, and it is, it is a hobby. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't agree more. I think I, I'm pretty much right where you are. Same thing with the miniature builds. And, and I also feel that not, not only is it like a time thing where you can build them faster, but you sort of get into a flow. You build one and you're like, oh, wow, that came out pretty good. And I want to try something else. So you, you, you're still developing your skill, whether it's in miniature or one-to-one uh, -one replica or whatever you're doing. But I just think you get into a build flow to where you, two, three, four, five projects in a row are all going to be the same. I don't want to say style, but let's say they're all dioramas. And then from dioramas, you get bored and you move on and you build a blaster. From the blaster, you move on and you build a wall panel. I think it's just like an evolution sort of. I, I I couldn't, yeah, I, I couldn't think of anybody in the room per se that's a hundred percent just building a room or a hundred percent just. It's it, it's sort of a workflow. I mean, it's it's how the mind works, right? Yeah. You pick up on something. Oh, I just saw James make this cool thing out of coffee cans. I'm gonna go do it. Something similar. Yeah. Coffee can speed it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, I think it just. And then, like, I think we've talked about it before too, to where like any given time I'll have multiple projects going on. Cause I just, whatever I'm, whatever I am initially building, you lose interest or you kind of back burner it for a minute and mm -hmm. you're, you know, hitting the new project really hard and you get it done in like two or three days. And you're like, Oh wow. Okay. Well, there's enough footage there. Let's edit that. Let's get it out. I think it's just a matter of how the workflow runs and how the mind processes what's going on at that moment. Mm -hmm. So I know Brian has said something recently to, to, to his audience about sort of, you know, doing um, miniatures, which buys him the time to work on the bigger projects behind the scenes. Right. And, you know, to be honest, that's kind of, it's, it's a really good way of looking at it. And it was kind of what I was doing without knowing. Um, I'm sitting on some fairly major room build pieces, I would say, you know, the, the extension of my, my bench, uh, the, the, the piece behind it, but more importantly, or well, at least for me, is the hollow table. I've, I've got this really cool, plan and idea and I've already made a lot of the models for it and that, that kind of stuff I'm not sharing on social media because I want that to have an impact when I finally get to, to, the, to the room build video so it's definitely coming but yeah it's more of an accessibility thing for me just to sort of jump on like you say you know they're easier they're quicker yeah mm -hmm. I don't disagree Rom did you have any any thoughts on that because uh, you, you're turning to, towards the dioramas aren't you if you, the alcoves you've made in your your room yeah, so haven't gotten to the dioramas just yet. Instead, I've <laughs> jumped from room building to droid building. Um, and I'm kicking myself because I'm not, I haven't been recording a whole lot of it because, you know, a lot of it's the CNC. And what am I going to show? Just the CNC cutting these pieces. So I'm kind of waiting until I have a little bit more. And then I'll put together kind of a video journal of just the, the progress, you know, of building the droid. From the frame to the skins and then starting to put electronics in there uh, and then after that finally having something to show painting that's going to be a big process so that's a lot mm -hmm. of stuff i have not shown a whole lot of i think i put a couple of shorts out there on uh, youtube and that's about it i think i'll keep it to shorts until i'm ready to you know talk about it because it's it's a slow long process building mm -hmm. a droid yeah and then <laughs> i can finally get to the dioramas but then even before that, I've gone back to b doing some building in this room, which is the next video. And then I still have to work on that laser box, the control panel and the mini tutorial inside of Lightburn. So it just goes on and on. I said the list of projects. He's got loads. You've got loads, yeah, man. There's so many there. Mm -hmm. Crazy stuff. But uh, I know that, um, Ron, you know, you're saying about the CNC, what am I going to film? Maybe this is for the YouTube episode, but 
I have to say, I think people that, that have those kind of tools, they love watching that stuff. You know, I, I've dropped a few uh, clips on Instagram of mm -hmm. me using my, my, newer, my newer laser cutter, mm -hmm. uh, which is a diode laser, but it's a really powerful, clean one. I'm really impressed with it, actually. Um, but people love it. They love seeing that stuff. Got a couple of fans who, uh, who really do like that and actually want me to get back to that. I mean, yeah. I am going to show some clips. I have, you know, like on uh, Instagram and, and and YouTube shorts. I'll probably show a little bit more of that. Yeah. Cool. A little bit for everybody, right? I, for one, love that stuff. So I'm looking, I, I always look forward to your videos, uh, you know, and the, and the humor. It's great. It's great. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, um, well, at the time of recording, we are all waiting with bated breath for the next live action Star Wars show, which is Andor. Yes. And, um, you know, massively buzzing myself about this show it's uh without talking purely about andor you know every single trailer i've seen or every single clip and and the noises that you're hearing from the production team it just sounds like it's going to be the kind of star wars i'm after you know gritty adult is, is one of the words they're using as well which is interesting um and i'm really looking forward to it and i like what i've seen so far but the, the topic isn't really what we're going to expect from andor but more um do we as builders and makers just watch Star Wars or just watch the live action shows anymore? It, it, do, do we just watch it or do we analyze it for building? Or do we watch it first for ourselves and then go back and analyze it? You know, what do we do? I know what I do, but I'm interested to hear what you guys do. So Dennis, uh, I know you, you're a, a, a huge Star Wars lore fan. You know lots of stuff about it and um, all the backstories and things. So how do you approach it? Do you, do you just watch it? Or I can you tell you right it? off the bat, in the past, yeah, I used to just watch it. Now it's a different game. Now that like I do what I do with you guys in the builder's room and YouTube, I catch myself looking more behind what's going on than actually what's happening. So yeah, I've watched episodes two or three or four times. And I can tell you right now, two or three of the four times is to see what's in the background. Uh, it, it's just it, it, your mind is in a different place now if you you know if you're constantly building props or dioramas or anything like that because you're looking for that next thing right hmm. you're looking to see what is on the wall behind boba fett or is you know in the ship behind mandalorian or whatever the case may be so yeah I, I think I, I my style of watching has definitely changed it went from just watching to more or less scanning the rooms and the scenes. I totally get what you're saying. That Ron, what about, what, what about you, mate? Yeah, I totally agree with Dennis. Um, it used to be I just watched the movie, maybe see if there's any Easter eggs or anything in the background. I think Marvel has taught me that. Uh, but then now with, with building and everything since, what, for the last two, three years, um, I'm looking to see, okay, things that you don't, you don't normally see or search for on the net. Like, okay, well, what kind of lighting are they using? Do they use light fixtures? Where is it coming from? Is it ambient? You know, um, some of the control panels, obviously looking at that stuff. So now I have to watch episodes, just like Dennis. I have to watch an episode first. When it first comes out, I'm not thinking about any of that. I'm just enjoying the show, getting the, oh, hey, I know now that makes sense. You know, just trying to learn the plots and everything and characters and all that. Then. I'll go rewatch, and now I'm looking in the background past the characters. I don't really care what, about the story right now. I'm looking at, you know, uh, interiors, ship designs, droids, yeah. stuff like that. Thinking, what can I make from that universe and put it in this room? Or what can I just make, period, and just have it in the house, you know, something cool? Or the next project. Or when I do get into dioramas, you know, I, I like how they've tied these things together. So I'm, I'm constantly looking at that. That especially started happening during Mando uh, on up. So pretty much all the the Disney Plus series, I've kind of looked at with a watchful eye several times. So. Yeah, I think I I catch myself like trying to find something in the background that might be from somewhere else, like a light fixture from the Falcon maybe, or mm -hmm. a statue that may have been I don't know in Jabba's palace and it's now somewhere else. It's just weird the things you look at when you when your mindset changes towards building or you know the aspects of what's going on in the background mm -hmm. that, that's some real deep analysis isn't it looking in the background for things that have been repurposed and stuff yeah 
Yeah, it's, it's insane that we do that. I, I tell you what, though, I've I've always watched movies in this way, even before I was into props and making stuff in, in a big way. I've been 3D modeling stuff for a long time, right. you know, way way before the Rebel Base build, back in the early 2000s. You know, when I used to make uh, maps for for multiplayer games online. They had 3D and programs in the 2000s. Did you know? We did. <laughs> and it was good times and it, it was all fun because i was making stuff that i would then play on with my friends you know i think i've talked about it before it's to hide weapons in places i knew i knew where they were and that kind of stuff but yeah, it, it did mean at that even back then when i was watching you know like the the prequels um that i was i was then watching them uh to, to to work out how i could build that map or how i could recreate it you know with the limitations of the game engines at the time it was you know you're not able to carry over anyway near the amount of detail you can put into models nowadays mm -hmm. but, um yeah and and then be, even before that as a kid i used to watch all the making ofs and stuff and i've always kind of there always then that's, yes that's kind of rolled over into when i've watched the movie like how they've done it even the indiana jones films you know mm -hmm. like yeah. seeing seeing the reflection of the cobra in the glass you know when he falls into the pit uh, and I, i've always loved doing that it's just for me it's part of the experience of watching movies and tv shows is trying to break down how it's how it's been done yep. so being able to do that in a more meaningful way now with this hobby particularly if i'm going to recreate something in in 3d um you know like the scorpion neck for example i spent ages freeze framing that thing and looking at it from different angles you know right. um with, with my son we spent a lot of time doing that um and it, and it is good but yeah i think it, sometimes it can take away from the viewing experience because i'm terrible with names of characters and and, and, and to be honest, back, backstory plots as well, because I don't, I don't always pay attention to them. I kind of get the popcorn excitement bit. And then right. I'm, there I am off looking in the background and looking at the ship and thinking, hmm, I wonder if I can model that with a Boolean or a chamfer. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it's kind of like that. It's a, it's a weird phenomena. Um, I think for 3D modeling, it's quite a big deal because uh, there's this one particular, this is a bit of a weird story, but on the way into to work at the, at the university campus where I work, there's this building on the way in that just looks like it hasn't been turbo smoothed correctly. It's, it's kind of really polygonal and it, and it captures the, sh the, sh the light and shade in a really weird way. And I always look at it and think, yeah, it's just not finished as a model. <laughs> Obviously, it's meant to be that way. Right. But you, you start looking at things in different ways and depending on That's... what it is you're working on at the time. And if I'm doing 3D modeling, I'm looking at geometry all, all around me and it's really annoying. Can't stop doing it. And the, and the TV shows are the same. You know, you, Obi-Wan... I was I was just analysing the hell out of it. Um, in fact, I was also trying to work out where they'd used the volume and where they hadn't. Uh, that's that's a fun thing to do. It's yeah. to see, see where the set finishes and, and the volume starts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's some good stuff. But it does it, fundamentally change the way you watch things. Yeah, it's interesting if you think about it. Like we can like people think it's weird that I can tell them where that barrel came from or how many other episodes it's been in. You know, or a certain object in the background that most people wouldn't even know it was there. Right. And you can tell them how many other episodes you've seen that exact barrel in or fixture or whatever the case may be. And as far as the making of episodes or series, I should say, I would almost rather watch those before I watch the actual episode. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Watch the making of, know what they did, how they did it, and then go watch it done. Mm hmm Absolutely. I mean, all, all that stuff you're doing with MDF, uh, Ron, you know, you're making these amazing shapes and geometry and stuff. And it kind of reminds me of when you think about the all of the wood that was used in the Falcon, you know, when you look at the original yeah, yeah. set images of all of that stuff, yeah. it's like you're, you're doing stuff like that. Yep, yep. Do you think about that when you're building it? <laughs> no, my my main goal is, does that look right? You know, that's that's the main goal. Does it look right? Uh, and it's, it's something that I'm very happy with that I won't tear down later, like what I'm kind of doing right now in the next video. Well, that's yeah. the danger. That's the danger of these hobbies, isn't it? You know, it's, it's a, like a never ending loop of improvement and iteration. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, be, because you can, you, know, you, do, you do have the, the option to, to iterate and uh, damn it, I need to reprint this or I need to remodel it. You know, you can do it. It's, it's been made easy for, for, for us to do that now. Right, right. That's costly, for sure. maybe, costly, but easier. Um, for sure. Uh, but when, when you were talking then about uh, screen use and stuff, I've often thought about this. It's like we're all builders and we're all makers and we have our idea of Star Wars and we make stuff that we feel fits with, in within that world. But the difference between what we make and what the people make in the shows is that they're just employed by, well, Disney now, 
um, they're working for Lucasfilm and it's Screen News, therefore it becomes Star Wars. But it's no more Star Wars really than stuff that you've done. It's just another guy or a girl creating right, a right. and putting it into the show and you know being honoured enough for that piece to be used in the show. So that now becomes canon Star Wars. It's the same as, as any other visions. I mean, look at all the amazing talented yeah. builders there are on, on just on the Facebook group that we, yes, that we talk yes. about quite a bit, you know, some right. ama- amazing uh, panels and, and details being created by all sorts of builders, you know, and yeah, they're, they're just one inch away from it being used on, on camp, you know, in, in the movies. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, if you think about it, the room builders, there's nothing in that room you couldn't take that would go in universe right away. The only difference is that person in the room, doesn't work for ILM, so they're not making it for ILM. Mm. Yep. Otherwise, I don't. There's very few things that you could find in the room builders' room that wouldn't work on set immediately yeah. without any enhancements uh, whatsoever. Yeah. And, yeah, and do you think? Do you think that's why it, it's such an attractive hobby now? Because you can get so close to your heroes in terms of making that stuff. You know, we have all the tools. I mean, look, I, we know they use 3D printers because you can see the print lines on some of the props. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe one, particularly the control panel on the laser gate, you know. Right. Really quite obviously 3D printed. Um, so so we, we know we can do that stuff that we see on screen. We can do it. Yeah. Well, it's no different than, you know, as we were kids playing with the toys and imagining we were that person or in that particular role or that universe, except now we have a little bit more money and a little less time, more time. I don't know. But now we can actually make even bigger things. And, you know, with the, if you can get, if you can set aside a room that's all yours to do whatever you want with, I mean, it's like, well, it's no different than playing Fort, right? Yeah, you're right. I mean, things are readily available now, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I'll bet you in 1977, they didn't run down to Home Depot and get SPX foam and start carving walls. <laughs> Somebody plastered that by hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I saw I saw a making of image of the bench, the Falcon bench. It looked like it was made from clay originally. Yeah. Yes, then, it was. Then, I believe the original bench was sculpted and then molded. Yeah, and then yeah, uh, yeah uh, cast or whatever. Afterwards. Yeah, it was cast off of a sculpted mold, uh, off of yeah. a molded sculpture. Crazy stuff. Uh, and I know in, in my my most recent video, I did a little montage of where I was working on my model, and I was you know fading in images of the people from ILM. It was a bit of an ode to them because yeah. I think about that all the time when I'm making stuff is that, you know, I'm inspired by these people and they're just amazing at what they did back then when it was even more challenging than it is. Right. Now, you know? yeah. So it's fantastic sandpit for us all to play in. Um, and thank, you know, thank goodness we can do it. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So look, we've, we've covered two topics tonight and uh, I, you know, they're both very interesting to me and uh, there's lots more to come in, in the next few episodes and Brian will be back with us in the next one, which hopefully will be with you in a few weeks time. Um, but if you enjoyed this, then, you know, give us a like and maybe subscribe and tell your friends, um, because I promise we will be back with a lot more content. So f- for me, it's a thank you for watching and catch you later. Yeah, good night, guys.